this day. Red Panda Anthem. Ian, what's up? This day. Red Panda Anthem. Red Panda, what's day. good? Red Panda Anthem. <laughs> All right, let's get into this. So the Yale curve, you talk about the Yale curve a lot. The Yale mm-hmm. curve inverted this past week. Um, what does that mean for the economy and the stock market? A, do you want to just explain what the Yale curve is? Yeah, so when the so let's say if you have a two-year bond and a 10-year bond, normally what happens, investors will put more money into the 10 because a longer-term investment usually pays or yields gives more. And when it inverts, when the two-year begins to pay more, that's when we know there's a sign of a recession. So last year, ironically enough, on a Mark Cuban episode, which was one year from last week, mm-hmm. we talked about that being the second most important indicator. So the top three indicators are um, quantitative easing from the Federal Reserve. That's gone away. Number two, the inverted yield curve. And then number three, holding in the market for 20 years. So the two curves that matter the most, please write this down, the two year and 10. So that's one pair and a five and 30. So if both of those ever cross to zero or below, we're going to have a terrible recession. Now, one of them hit last week. Please put in chat which one it was. But if we ha- we see the two and 10 year bond drop and the five and 30 drop and they cross underneath, that is a sign that a recession is going to come. Now, it's a lagging indicator. So it doesn't mean that the next day is going to immediately go into recession. It takes around 12 to 16 months for a recession to kick in. Um, but when I did my analysis, I have it at 11 months before we hit a uh, potential recession area in the market. So please keep your eye on that. But those are the two that matter the most. Now, I know Chamal this week talked about the three month and the 18 month is less reliable. Um, it's like the equivalent of trading like on a one minute chart. It's like it can flicker. It's not the most important. But if all three hit, you have a 100 percent guarantee for a recession. But I look at the two and the 10 and the five and the 30. Those are the two most two parents of the yield curve. Yeah, that's interesting because you said that uh, most people say 12 to 18 months. And so I, there's, there's plenty of analysts who are saying that this year could still be a positive year, right? And even if you count that, right, there's still eight months left in this year. Um, so that could still happen and we could still be headed toward recession territory. So you're saying that it's going to get worse? You think the economy is going to get worse? I think we're going to spike up and we can segue into one of your favorite conversations of politics. And then after we have the midterms, because Biden's approval rate is so low, the probability of the Democrats keeping those seats right now is less than probably 30 percent. And then usually I want you to we talked about it maybe last year, but does do we have a greater chance of going into a recession if we have a Republican lead or Democratic lead? historically has been Republican. So when you study the cycles of everything, you understand given the economic climate that we're in, plus mismanagement of presidential cabinet and some of the economic affairs, the Russian Ukraine situation, quantitative easing going away. When this power grab shifts, I think we'll go up for the rest of the year, but then next year will be pretty uh, tumultuous to say the least. All right, so let, I mean, Friday was the beginning of the second quarter. So let, let's just, I'm going to give some statistics really quickly so people can understand how, what we look like for the first quarter of this year. So the Dow was down 4.6%, S&P was down 5%, and you know our favorite, one of our favorite, the NASDAQ was down 9% for the first quarter. However, however, April is historically the best month for, of the year for stocks. Now, March kind of brought us back a little bit. We were way lower than, than 9%, 5%, and 4.6%. So, uh, the S and P has averaged over the past uh, since World War II a 1.7 percent gain in the month of April. Uh, so that's 70 percent of the time. It on average it has rebounded in April, depending on how the first quarter went. Now, the interesting you brought thing you brought up just now was the midterm election. When there are midterms, I think like 60 percent of the time, the second quarter usually is down, and then the third yeah. quarter is down. Yeah. So these are just conflicting indicators, but it's interesting, right? Because usually, like we said, April is the best month. And we kind of saw that last year a little bit. And then May kind of, you know, went down and we saw June, there was a spike again. So interesting to keep your eyes on. Yeah. And if you're looking at the short term horizon, that may be scary. But if you're looking at the long term, one year, two year, three, you're going to be fine. Also, hedge funds have a inclination to buy in the middle of March and towards the end of March. So that's why we started to see a ramping up where January and February felt like we was just like falling off of an empire built state building. Mm-hmm. 
And then March, we took off to the upside. Same with on booking buying. So on Mondays and Fridays after hours is when most um, institutions will begin to buy in the never midday. So when you know they're buying towards the end of that uh, quarter cycle, that was some of the reason we got some of the ramp up, like once the fear uh, and stuff went away. But yeah, keep your eyes over the next couple of months. If you're new to investing, I know this may be scary, but please just hold for the long term. Um, we have the so we have the same considerations and concerns during uh, the election with Trump and Biden, and everyone was worried. And then we just took off to the upside. So if you hold for the long term, it really won't matter. But yeah, these next three or four months will be pretty interesting to say the least. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, most most analysts are predicting um, anywhere between 0.7 to one percent increase on the S and P. Well, some people even saying that you know it could end at 5100 by the end of the year. But that's still, like you said, if, if recessions are lagged and they go for anywhere from 12 to 6, 18 months out, we can still be in that. So just everybody just be mindful of that. Um, and so another thing, another thing. So I, I know a lot of times people like, can we time? When, when should we invest? What's the best time to invest? If you invested, uh, I believe it was February 24th of 2022, this year, when the NASDAQ, I, no, the S&P got to a slow, you've actually made an increase on, on Absolutely. President. So, you know what I mean? Like when we talk about watch the charts and then just, get your points of when you're going to buy in. This is exactly what we're talking about. So you could be having a great year right now based on everything that we're saying, even with all the industries being down, if you got in at that point, you're up a pretty good percentage. Absolutely. Yeah. And anytime anyone panics, it is your chance to profit as long as you get in at a good price. So for example, like that amazing hoodie Rashad has on, if it went on sale for nine bucks, the upside is infinite because I'm sure it's retailing for 150, 200. Um, Everything is about the price that you get in plus length of time that you're willing to hold. So if you better bought, bought at bad price, you, you got destroyed. But and same thing I said in the 85 South interview. I'm like, hey, Tusk is going to drop to 843. As of today, it was at 1024. When everyone else is panicking over good assets, you should be looking to buy. And that's how you'll be able to make money even when most people are losing in the current market. Yes. And so let's let's go into this. Um, what are some other signals for a recession to look out for when things um, are getting bad? So number one, uh, when valuations of startups are being cut. So like, for example, Instacart, the value got cut by 38 percent on March 25th. Mm -hmm. The business model of Instacart hasn't changed. And let's be honest, if you're looking at top line revenue or bottom line revenue, that hasn't changed much. But people were chasing. So same with momentum stocks. Everyone was chasing at a high. The same thing was happening in VC and Angel. And uh, other indicator, they have a Federal Reserve uh, uh, probability recession model um, that you can look at. If you just go to Google, you can just put recession probability model. It updates, I think, every two months, but it'll tell you the probability in which we have a chance of going into a recession. So if you compare that two year and 10, five and 30, and if you look at the startup, vehicles and see how many are increasing in value or decreasing plus with this probability model and listening to market Mondays, you should never get confused when we're going to hit a recession. But those are like the main four that I would look at to tell if we're going to have like a full on collapse in the market. Um, Interesting. So let's talk about Tesla. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Tesla. Um, just actually put a post up the other day that uh, they hit a record with 310,000 cars delivered um that's the closest number that they have that you can gauge off of purchases because they don't they don't actually publish the um, cars that's actually purchased mm -hmm. but it's the closest number that you can probably get to that um last year for the first quarter i think it was 180 000, something like that yeah. um so uh, uh uptick and they actually did it um in an environment where they got off to a slow start at the beginning of this year because uh, I think a factory had closed down in China because mm -hmm. of COVID. And um, obviously they're dealing with chip shortages like everybody else is. And they've had um, some manufacturing issues with parts. Um, so they've had some issues. They got off to a slow start of the year, but they still managed to hit a record and uh, produce 310,000 cars. And they have a new factory that's being built in Germany mm -hmm. um, that they're planning on producing a million cars out of that factory. So obviously we, we talked last week about Tesla potential top stock split, which that looks like that's going to happen um, for the second stock split in the last 15 months. So how do we feel about Tesla on this on this news? I want to take it first. 
Yeah, no, I mean, I love it. If, if you look at the past five quarters, every estimate that they've had, they beat it, right? Like even now, even with the, the all those things you said, on their bottom line, the estimate was for 308,000 vehicles going. They hit 310, right? When they did last year, it was like, oh, the estimate is going to be 460,000, they did 500. And so all you see is continuous growth. Anytime you see that in a company, you know it's a strong company. Obviously, we know Tesla's a strong company, but it's an innovative company too. And so that's why we tell people like, stay in this, <laughs> stay in the stock, hold yeah. it. Do not leave, do not leave. So when we saw it get down to 843, there was no room for panic. It was like, all right, this is an opportunity for us to get in. And so if you, even if you were in the position, you can add to it at a lower price. We got to look at these things as opportunities. Like every time we see something go down, I know the common thought is like, man, this thing might drop lower. I don't want to lose even more money. But you got to get that out of your mind, right? We saw it at 1100, it got down to 843. This is your opportunity. Seize it, please, please. Seize the moment, please. Yeah, you have to. Um, Eli reminds me of like a weird mix of like Steve Jobs, Kanye, and 50 Cent. Like, and I mean that because not all, all three it took a long time for get for people to believe in their vision. But once like Elon got a hold of the market and then the Kathy push definitely helped, right? Cause it brought, it brought some stability on the hedge fund side. But once he got momentum, he never let it go. Great lesson as well. Whatever benchmark they set, they know that they're going to beat. So that's why for every investor that they're benchmarking against the S and P 500, because if you have any knowledge, you usually can either match or beat that. Um, and even his, use or manipulation of media to keep himself front and center to help propel. It's very Kanye-esque um, in that regard. So I think, you know, one of the greatest entrepreneurs, of course, to to walk the starter plan and to scale the way that he is. I mean, I, I'm telling everyone, you should hold Tesla at least another seven, eight years. Um, I wouldn't let go of that company unless he left. Um, they've been on a, an amazing tear. Mm -hmm. Even at current price, they should get to 3,500 and some change in a couple of years. I'll give you guys an updated number like once they split, but yeah, I have them at least going up 3X from here. Please hold for the long term. Please. Tesla, do us all a favor. This day. Red Panda Anthem. Ian, hey, what's up? This day. Red Panda Anthem. Red Panda, what's this good? Day. Red Panda Anthem. Hey. Your boy. Going up. I know they can't stand it.